BookTube and welcome to part 17 of Science Fiction and Fantasy, the continuation of my 2020 library tour. We're almost done. We've got this shelf and one more to go and we will be done. It's been exhausting, so let's get to it. First up is City of Bones by Martha Wells. And the Element of Fire by Martha Wells. Um, these two novels were written early in uh, Martha Wells' career and she's subsequently gone on to a greater success more recently with her Murderbot series about a cyborg or AI android who uh, is sort of like a mercenary hard-boiled detective combo I think. Um, next is um, The Dancers at the End of Time by Michael Moorcock. This is a bind up edition of his um, Dancers at the End of Time series I think. That's what it is. Yes, he's got quite a bit. Anyway, <clears throat> and then we have another Malison book, this time The House of Change, Chains, by Stephen Erickson. And then we have some more uh, from the End of Time, by, uh, Tales from the End of Time by Michael Moorcock. I'm not entirely sure if this is exactly a double that's included in The Dancer's from the end of time, or if this is something separate. I've never actually been able to ascertain that. So I picked that one up from Golden's, but I've always wanted the Omnibus edition, which I picked up from Alibris uh, about a year or so ago. And then we have some by Gene Wolfe. This is uh, The Citadel of the Autark, Volume 4 of the Book of the New Sun. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Shadow March by Tad Williams. Uh, two by Kaya Shante Wilson. This is the Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps. Um, this is, I guess you could say, a Sword and Soul novella. Um, one of the first ones that Tor put out a few years ago. Oh. We just had some books fall down. Um, and this is the story of the sorcerer who falls in love with the captain of this uh, sort of um, caravan protection company. Or it's like the pretty much they protect the caravans that travel across the world to trade. And they travel from the, this northern land to a southern land. And you have to cross this um, haunted road through this sort of great forest that is haunted, magical, a portal to various worlds. And their characters, uh, the sorcerer and the captain, are both descendants of gods. And it's really good. And this is a sequel, A Taste for Honey. Um, I think this one takes place a little bit more further into the past and is about a young man with an affinity for animals who has two paths in life he can choose. One is to stay home and marry a princess and become well respected in his homeland or he can join this military uh, captain from a distant land who he's also falling in love with and live there and so the story's a bit of a split it's uh, one of these is a what if and the other is what actually happens now if you excuse me i need to go pick up some books off from the floor It was, ow, 
I'm about to give myself a cramp. Um, that was only um, Shed of March. That fell. So next we have a two by Ted Williams. This is Otherland, uh, Volume Two, River of Blue Fire. And this is Volume Three, Mountain of Black Glass. Um, the Otherland series, I want to say they're um, sort of like an epic fantasy within a sort of virtual reality game, is what I'm thinking what it's about. And then we have two by um, Gene Wolfe, or two more by Gene Wolfe, On Blue's Waters, the first volume of The Book of the Short Sun, and and Green's Jungles, uh, volume two of The Book of the Short Sun. Pick both of these up from uh, the Friends of the Library book sale nook a few years ago. Next up is a relatively, well, came out last year, um, The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Um, this fantasy it had, um, it's an epic fantasy. Um, there's a sequel that just came out. And it's about a group of um, a society that basically colonizes land and for a century or more they've settled and the queens of these the people they have an affinity for dragons and but they've since died out or disappeared and the story is about a young man who his father is basically a war master he teaches um, noble children how to fight and the boy doesn't really want to he just wants to um marry the girl of his dreams and it doesn't work out and i think there's a revenge narrative in there somewhere i didn't get on with it very well um i thought while the battle scenes the fight scenes are phenomenal what i saw of them um, the characters, the world building just put me off, particularly the world building. It's like a little bit lazy. Um, another book by Ted Williams. This is the fi uh, final volume of Otherland. This is The Sea of Silver Light. Now we have another bind up. This is a uh, Storm Constantine's uh, Rethu. This came out, I think, in the 80s. And it's a post apocalyptic fantasy in which uh, there's a new subspecies of humans called Rethu who are, I think, hermaphroditic in some way. Um. I've wanted to read Storm Constantine for ages, and I think I interlibrary loaned this book um, when I was in college, and um, I didn't quite get on with it, but I'm kind of hoping maybe eventually I will come back to it and have a better go at it. And next is The Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook. This is another bind up. Um, it includes the first trilogy of the Black Company series with uh, the Black Company, Shadows, Linger, and the White Rose, which in this, it's about a mercenary company who are hired by this um, evil overlord called the Lady uh, to serve her. And over the course of the series, um, I think they prevent her husband from coming back and also rebel against her and eventually see her downfall. And subsequently joining the Black Company because she falls in love with the uh, chronicle, chronicler of the group. Um, next we have uh, three novels by Elliot de Bodard. 
the House of Shattered Wings. This is the first book in the um, It'll be on here. Dominion of the Fallen. Yes. Dominion of the Fallen. So in this um, novel, a Vietnamese immortal living in Paris, a Paris that has fallen and become dominated by uh, various competing factions of fallen angels, um, finds a fallen angel and bits of fallen angel can be used for various magical artifacts. He's captured by uh, one of these most powerful houses of fallen angels, Morningstar, and he's basically forced into service. All the while there's a conspiracy uh, going on. Something strange is happening within House Morningstar that will see the house fall. Or it's not House Morningstar, I think it's Oh no. The founder's Morning Star, but it's House Silver Spires. It's been like three years since I've read this. So now I love this book. It is fantastic. Um the sequel is as good, The House of Binding Thorns. Um, in this one, the attention is shifted to um, House Hawthorne, who played a more of an antagonistic role in the first book. And in this book, it's used in a conspiracy to, uh, that seeks the overthrow of the leader of House Hawthorne um, as Modeus. And it's really good as well. And we have the third and I think final volume of the Dominion of the Fallen series. This is the House of Sundering Flames, which I have not gotten to yet. Um, pick this up from uh, Book Depository. I think this was one of my first orders with Book Depository um, because the third volume um, didn't come out in the US because I think you know, House of Shadow Rings came out like 2015 or 16 and then House of Binding Thorns came out in 17, I think. And so it was, I think, yeah. That I never saw, or maybe a little bit back, but it took a while for this one to come out. And I don't think it's ever actually been released in America. So I picked it up in uh, the UK edition. Uh, next, we have a collection of short fiction by William Gibson, uh, Burning Chrome, which is one of the most famous uh, cyberpunk short stories ever. And I actually read it for a class in college um, that I TA'd for. And it was really good. The problem with these uh, shells on the bookcase my brother built for me is that they're quite long and there's a lot of books on them and I have to move them. So next we have a Weavers of War, book five of the Winds of the Four Nine series by David B. Coe. Um, Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey, which came out last year and it's a uh, sort of a private detective investigating a mysterious death in a public high school for uh, magical children. It's basically sort of um, an American public school or yeah, an American public school version of Hogwarts. Um, and the main character is basically a she doesn't have magic. She's a normal human. Her sister is a, a witch or magician, and she teaches at this school. And so during the investigation, her and her sister kind of uh, bury old wounds, and she gets uh, the detective gets involved in some of the children's activities. 
I didn't particularly care for this book. Um, I thought the mystery was deeply disappointing. And the and I think more could have been done with the skull. Um, and actually, I think probably just focusing on the skull would have been lovely, I think. But anyway, yeah. Uh, this is American Hippo by Sarah Gailey. This is um, a collection of um, Sarah Gailey's um, stories on that basically an alternate United States in which in the late 19th century um, hippos were imported into the United States along the Mississippi River and that pretty much the Mississippi has become a wild sort of strange place. So this includes River of Teeth, uh, Taste for Marrow or Taste of Marrow and a few short stories set in the same world I think. Uh, returning to William Gibson, along with uh, Bruce Sterling, this is The Difference Engine, uh, one of the first uh, works of steampunk. I have no idea how I'm going to get those last few books. This is going to be fun. Um, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Uh, Count Zero by William Gibson. This is a sequel to Neuromancer and really good. I quite liked it. Um, Seeds of Betrayal, uh, book two of the Winds of the Foreland, or Foreland by David B. Coe. Um, the Sorcerer's Plague, book one of the uh, Blood of the Southlands by David B. Coe. I picked up a lot of these from uh, Golden Spook Exchange and the Friends of the Library book sale. Uh, Rules of Ascension, book one of the Winds of the Four Line series by David B. Coe. Bonds of Vengeance, book three of the Winds of the Four Land. <laughs> Again by David B. Coe. And Neuromancer uh, by William Gibson. Um, this is one of the seminal um, novels of cyberpunk. In this novel, uh, basically what we would call a hacker, uh, has been burned. He can no longer access the internet. In this setting, basically people can access the internet mentally, um, or what would become the internet. And he is eventually hired alongside a crew to liberate, uh, to travel to a space station to liberate an AI. Next up, uh, Red Moon and Black Mountain by George Chant. This is a portal fantasy in which um, a group of, a family of, it's like a, two brothers and a sister end up getting transported to a magical world. The older brother ends up uh, arriving far earlier than his siblings and is taken in by a tribe and becomes a great warrior amongst them and the younger siblings are picked up by this um, sorceress figure and they basically are involved in a prophecy to defeat a dark wizard and this is a sequel the gray mane of mourning again by joy chan uh, the Dark Tower, uh, the first book in the Dark Tower series, The Gunslinger by Stephen King. I actually really like this collection. Um, and there's a lot of really good stories in here. And then we wrap up with some Catherine M. Valenti. Uh, the Refrigerator Monologues. Um, 
this is a collection of short stories that all center around the concept of ah women in refrigerators so women in refrigerators is was coined by gail simone in the mid ninety s as a critique of the propensity for female characters to be brutally murdered to give their um love interests who are usually superheroes a reason to fight um so i mean the prime example is alex dewitt um she was the girlfriend of kyle ringner who was the green lantern after hal jordan went insane and slaughtered the rest of the green lantern core and she was murdered by the supervillain major force which basically inserted a lot of drama into kyle ringer's life and there are numerous other examples um and a playoff of that famous story is in here as well there's also a uh, gwen stacy the first story is um basically riffing off of the day or the night gwen stacy died um there's also the dark phoenix saga which um also mira um and i didn't i read this book twice and i've never gotten into it um in part because i'm noticing okay this is from spider-man this is from i mean mira this is dark phoenix and i'm thinking well honestly those stories are way better told than this is it's just it doesn't work it's just not very well written um i mean i think maybe had she focused more on like a single novel or but it just doesn't work and next is probably so far my favorite novel by Catherine and valenti radiance this is a alternate history alternate earth where the entire solar system is habitable and has been colonized since the early 20th century and where film production has moved to the moon and this is the story of severin unk who disappeared uh during a um, documentary she was filming and her father trying to come to terms with um the her disappearance by uh making a film out of it and never quite succeeding and this is just an amazing book i love this book and it was my favorite read of 2017 and also when i reread it last year i adored it even more so that was show part 17 of the science fiction and fantasy part of the 2020 library tour i will be right back with the grand finale uh part 18 so i will see you in a few until then thank you booktube have a good afternoon and stay safe